you, YouTube. Welcome to Fred's Full Throttle. Each week I take you with me on my adventures in the world of cars, so let's get right into today's video. Today I want to talk about the C8 Corvette Z06, and I want to talk about should I replace the C7 Grand Sport with a C8 Z06. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down, buckle up, and we're going to talk this thing over. All right, so it's 2021, and I've had the C7 Grand Sport for four years. I've got 15,253 miles on it, and I have loved every single second of it. And for a long time, I thought, no, there's no way I'm ever going to get rid of this car. It's a manual, it's naturally aspirated, it's front engine, and I personally think this is one of the best-looking Corvettes of all time, bar none. However... I've started seeing some footage of this, the C8 Z06 on the Nürburgring. Um, big thanks to Auto Addiction for letting me use 30 seconds of their video to show you a clip or two of what that sounds like. So the C8 Z06 is going to be, it's an upcoming car, it's going to be unveiled I think mid-October, like October 15th. Chevy has posted one photo, which I'll share here, and it looks like an amazing car. There's going to be at least two versions of it, kind of primary trims. Um, setting aside like convertible or not, there's going to be two different trim packages. There's going to be sort of the normal Z06, and then there's going to be probably a Z07 or something else that they'll call it, but basically that's going to have the more aggressive aero, things are going to be carbon fiber, there's rumors of carbon fiber wheels, and there's going to be this pretty cool looking kind of center suspended spoiler where both ends kind of flare up. On top of that, a lot of the wheel options, at least from what the test cars have shown, are pretty darn good looking wheels, a lot better than anything the C8 currently has. So I want to back up a little bit. Before the C8 was even hitting production, I was able to go to a kind of a pre-release unveiling uh, at McMulkin Chevrolet. I got to see the car, got to sit in it, and certainly it's a it's a pretty car, and it's fancy looking, and it's low, and it's wide, and it looks cool, but I've never been like just in love with the design. The back I like better than the front, but the front has just never really sent me. That said, I still think it's a great car. However, knowing that the Z06 was going to come along, and especially once it was announced that it's going to be a flat plane motor, which is going to rev a lot higher than, than a normal V8 that Corvettes have traditionally had, it's going to rev somewhere between 8 and 9,000 RPM. It sounds like it's going to be a screamer. It's going to sound more like a GT3 or a Ferrari than it's going to sound like any traditional Corvette that we're used to. So that, first of all, caught my attention. On top of that, it's naturally aspirated, which is going to be great. Um, there will be some up-spec up models based on everything I've heard. Probably some models that have turbos. There's probably even kind of a halo car, maybe called the Zora, that's going to have electric front motors, which will give the car all-wheel drive and some sort of ballistic, you know, 0 to 60 performance and acceleration, um, as well as better handling and inclement weather. But anyway... I wasn't really convinced until I heard this car, and again, Auto Addiction's video clips, huge thanks for letting me use a little bit of your footage. This is what that car sounds like. Thank you for letting me use your footage. That really changed my mind is hearing that car it sounds like an American made Ferrari and there's something about that that just it strikes all the right chords with me and so I'm I'm pretty interested in the car it's also been four years since I bought this car in that time I had this car paid off I paid it off I think in about three years I haven't made a payment on it in well over a year Ooh, nice road Um, I haven't made a payment on this car in over a year uh, since it's been paid off, and so this hasn't cost me anything. So I've been saving up money, and I'm now at a point where, back when I bought this, as I've done a couple videos on why I picked the Grand Sport over the Z06, one of the biggest considerations for me was price, and it was about 15000 more at any trim and spec level to buy the equivalent Z06 versus a Grand Sport. And ultimately, there were some other reasons that played into it, 
Um, I'll link the video here. But there were some other reasons that played into why I didn't get the Z06, but a big piece of that was the price. Now I'm further in my career, I've got more money, and I can actually afford a Z06 if I want one. And so now comes the real dilemma. And this is sort of what I'm curious in your comments, and I'm you know trying to do a little soul searching to figure out what I want, but I have a, I have a few options as far as I see it. I can sell the C7 Grand Sport and buy a Z06. I can hold on to the Grand Sport and possibly buy a Z06 and have both cars, or I can hold on to the C7 Grand Sport and not get the Z06. And so those are the three options I kind of see ahead of me and trying to figure out what sounds best for me. So among those three options, I'm curious what you think. And please leave a note in the comments and let me know, would you keep a naturally aspirated front engine manual C7 Grand Sport that's fully paid off and doesn't cost much to own and operate? Would you go for trade that puppy in and get a C8 Z06? Or would you see if you could somehow parlay that and keep the C7, buy the C8, and somehow work out like a way to store the vehicles? Um, you know, I see those as sort of my options. And I'm curious what everybody else thinks. Now that said, I'm gonna make my decision based on my own thoughts, but I'm interested to hear perspective and if anybody has good points why you would do one over the other. So here's some a little additional info that I think muddies the waters a little bit, doesn't make it quite as clear cut. Um, the first one is that the Z06 is gonna be hard to get a hold of, at least for the first couple years. So I went over to McMulkin over in Nashua, that's where I bought this car, and they are the second largest Corvette dealer in the United States. So if anywhere I was gonna buy one, that's where it would be. They treated me really well, I got an awesome price on this car. Oh. Had to do that. Um, so I bought it, I bought this car there, got an awesome price on it, and I feel like that's where I would have the best shot of getting one. Now I talked to him, the way that you get a C8 Z06, because keep in mind, this car has not officially been even unveiled. They've announced it, and they know that, that they're gonna unveil it, but it's not even an, like released yet. People don't know what the costs are, they don't know the full specs. In order to get on the list to get one, you have to put a $2,000 deposit. It's refundable, which is good, but you put a $2,000 deposit down. Right now, they have over 800 people in line who have put that $2,000 down. Now, I doubt every single person who's put that $2,000 down is actually gonna take delivery of the car. And so I've seen some conversation online with people speculating about how many C7s McMulkin was selling at the time when they were in their heyday and there wasn't a chip shortage and there wasn't materials shortages and labor shortages and I've seen people throw out numbers like 250 to 300 a year so that's like basically one a day now I don't know if that's Stingray Grand Sport Z06 across all trim levels or is that just Z06s I don't know that but let's say hypothetically that's just Z06s what that means is that we've got a chip shortage we've got a really big list of people who've already put money down I think realistically I wouldn't get one in the first year, the second year, and debatable on the third year. And even at that point, it might be further out than that. I mean, it's been a, about three weeks since I was at McMulkin, so I'm sure there's more people signed up now, especially since between now and then uh, they've had the, the official first photo come out. So then it's like, okay, do I put down $2,000 and it's refundable, do I put that down on the thought that at some point I may be like gung-ho, okay, I definitely want the car, or do I wait it out a little bit and see how many people drop off the list and is it really gonna be that hard to get them? You know, it's, it's one thing to put $2,000 down with basically no risk versus saying I'm gonna put down eighty five dollars to $90,000 and actually buy this car. So my thought is there's gonna be a lot of people who drop off Especially right now, no one knows any of the facts, the figures, the specs, you know, it's a lot of speculation. So very well, people are gonna be, either get cold feet or the prices are gonna be too high or there's gonna be some feature they don't like or they're not a fan of. So my thought is, I think it's a better idea to wait it out a little bit and see how it plays out. I mean, there's also no guarantee that they're gonna make the car three, four, five years, whether there's a C9 coming, whether or not you know, there's emissions and other stuff, you know, that happens that changes fundamentally the cost of fuel or the ability to drive a gas car. There's a lot of things that can happen between now and then. So I'm 
at the moment I'm not I didn't feel compelled to put down two thousand dollars plus that's money that I can have sitting in savings or sitting in an investment and do a little bit more for myself and I'm pretty sure that as long as you have the money at the time there will be a way to get something you're just gonna probably have to wait you know at least a year I think that's not unreasonable but I doubt you would have to wait three or four years there are certainly other dealerships and you know even if there's a little bit of a markup on the car if I really wanted one I'm pretty sure I could get one so then the other piece of it is I love this car this car has been the single best most favorite most fun thing I've ever owned every time I drive it I have a good time I love the shifting I love the feel of the car I love how it handles and how it rides and I think I'm a little bit hard-pressed to say that I would want to get rid of this car in favor of something else especially I'm not gonna have a chance to test drive it I'm not gonna have much opportunity to you know experience that car beforehand and so it's one of those things that hang on there's a road right And so it's one of those things that I'm not sure how I feel about taking that big of a leap on something and then not actually having experienced it to drop that kind of money. Um, I know there have been some quality control issues on the C8. So I'm just like, there's enough little like kind of red flags of like, are you sure you want to do that? Is that what you want to get? But right now I love this thing. And so I'm, I'm hard pressed to get rid of it. And so I feel like whatever I'm going to do, I want to keep the C7. I don't think they're going to make another manual Corvette, at least not anytime soon, but I love this car. And so I, I feel like no matter what I do, I'm going to end up keeping this and then figure out if I want to see it, it'll probably be an addition to this. So anyway, that's kind of my dilemma and I've been thinking through it and I've been trying to figure it out. I think if I'm going to go for it though, I really want to go all in. I want to get the Z07 package. I want the big spoiler. I think I would go for the folding hardtop. I like how those look and I love the idea of drop the top and this super low looking car, you know, because when you lose that roof, it definitely lowers the car a couple more inches visually. Um, and then to hear that screaming V8 in the back, I mean, I think that's going to be pretty compelling. Um, at a minimum, I'm certainly going to go and find a way to drive one, whether I have to rent one, whether I find a friend who has one. Um, but I think I would go all in on it and, you know, really get like a dream spec on something like that. And so that's the dilemma. So let me know what you think. I, I'm not sure which direction I want to go. I think I want to keep the C7 because this is truly just a fantastic car. But I'm curious what everybody's perspective is. I know a lot of my subscribers, a lot of the people who watch my channel are other Corvette owners and enthusiasts. And what would you do? Would you hold on to this? Would you get just the new thing? Or would you try to somehow swing it so you could do both? I think I'm able to do both financially. So it's it's more a matter of like what speaks to my heart. And if I have both cars, would I really drive this that much? Or would I be like completely enthralled with the new car or vice versa? Would I be worried about taking the new car out because it's going to be significantly more expensive? And would I end up driving this thing more? And then what's the value of having it? So those are all the thoughts going through my head. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or you enjoy some of my other stuff, please consider giving me a like or a subscribe. Those both definitely help me out. And anyway, until next time, Fred out!